Hey, welcome to another episode of The Better Upper Lip. My name is Tyler. As always, thank you very much for joining me today. So we're continuing on through my home state, the Peach State of Georgia, and we're looking at another offering today from one of my favorite breweries in the state, Creature Comforts Brewing out of Athens, Georgia. And what's on the chopping block today, or the sipping edge, I don't know, is their automatic pale ale. This is a, an American style pale ale, comes in at 5.5% ABV, and I believe 60 IBUs. Typical for most American style pale ales, it's gonna have a bit more of a hop for presence than you know your British counterparts or other style IPAs from the international market. Um, I believe this is extended more with mosaic and crystal hops, which is a unique combination. Couldn't find any information about the grain bill. Um, I'm assuming it probably has a pretty typical style type of grain bill um, for a pale ale, that is. Um, pretty cool trivia surrounding this beer. And if you're a fan of alternative 90s music, you might have caught on to this. But this obviously being from Athens, Georgia and being called Automatic is a play on Automatic for the People, which most of you are saying, but Tyler, that's reference to R.E.M.'s album from the early 90s. Yes, both are correct. Automatic for the People is actually the slogan for a soul food restaurant that's been in Athens forever called Weaver D's. It's still in operation, I believe, but Automatic for the People is the slogan for that restaurant. It's pretty much on like a sign right above the door when you go in. And when you go in and order food, um, that's kind of like the call sign saying an order's up. The, they'll say like Automatic and you'll hear it. So it's it's become a cool little counterculture, subculture thing in Athens. And now if you go to Athens, there's actually like Automatic is funny enough kind of synonymous with a lot of restaurants. There's actually a place called Automatic Pizza off of Prince Avenue, pretty good. But anyway, that is literally where R.E.M. got their inspiration for the, the album of the same name. And same enough, it harkens back on this beer and you can actually see the can art it is a homage to Weaver D's sign here and it says for the people on it. Um, as typical with Creature Comfort Spears, they always do awesome, awesome work with their can art. This particular one was done by a local Athens-based painter, so check them out. Uh, Michelle Fontaine is her name, so go look up her stuff. She's got this excellent kind of 50s motif on. I mean, this just looks like summer on a can, actually, and appropriate for a pale ale. So I have had this beer before. It's been a long time since I had. I think I got it when it first came out. Um, and I remember having it and enjoying it pretty favorably. Um, the canned on date uh, was back in February. Um, it says it's Best Buy, let's see, May 22nd of this year, if you can see that. So we're probably still good to go. This was kept in a cooler the whole time too. So. Um, I know that's probably definitely helped with keeping the hop flavor up. So enough yapping, let's get to sipping. Let's get this in a glass and see what we're about. Oh yeah, that color's already like on point. Oh man, this looks like I just stole some honey from Rabbit. I'm going to go tell Christopher Robin about it. I uh, don't know if you can see this very well, but th this thing is hopping and jiving, much like the 50s motif. This thing is bebopping around with carbonation. Um, it is screaming to the top. This is a very, very effervescent beer. Um, head is nice and tight, a few large bubbles in there. You saw how I poured it, poured beautifully. Head sticking around pretty well. Yeah. Color is a very, very, uh, I'd say about a medium yellow, um, kind of like a deep lemon yellow is what we're going here, but nothing like gold, I would say. It's not that deep, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's first thought was it's like honey in a glass. But again, I biggest thing I'm noticing, I mean, aside from the color, is just how much carbonation is in this. I mean, it almost looks like it's close to like looking like almost a sour level in terms of the carbonation in it. 
Um, head is looking beautiful. I mean, it's got that kind of like a yeasty quilt. You know, if you've ever had some beers that are just have that, that kind of almost a very heavy liquid bread quality, that's kind of what this looks like. It's just a very almost like puffy, pillowy kind of head is sticking around. So, all right, we've been ogling it. Let's take a sniff. Oh boy, yeah. Um, so I'm getting off the bat very heavy, uh, like a pine note is the first note that I'm getting on the nose. Lemon too, much like the color, so pine, lemon, little some grassiness not not a lot the, the big green smell i'm getting out of this is definitely the pine bit of a sweet smell to it as well um little spicy smelling too and I don't know that could be maybe playing into the piney notes I'm getting from the hop aroma so lemon pine some sweet and some spice is really the aromatic so all right I've been flapping my gums enough so let's wet the whistle cheers mm. Oh man. So the nose and the flavor match beautifully actually. I, that's that's really what I'm getting is a little bit of sweetness, but I'm getting much more kind of like a lemon zest kind of flavor out of it. Um, a bit more of an oilier, harder, citrus flavor out of it. Not something we get like an IPA, like an orange or a tangerine or a pineapple. It's not that kind of forward sweet citrus. It's much more like, again, like I've got lemon zest in my mouth right now. Some pleasant bitterness too. Some of that green bitterness coming through, which again, I'm still getting a bunch of like pine needle kind of taste on it not getting a lot of grass there is a little bit kind of spice going on um it's more of, it's very i would say it's like a very straight hot bitterness extended by like deep citrus but not sweet citrus if, i don't know if that making sense i don't know i'm i'm just drinking here y'all are listening Carbonation matches up to front of the tongue. Very, very lively as the bubbles are hitting it. Pretty quickly dissipates past the middle of the tongue. I'm not really getting a whole lot on the back end. More on the back end, what I'm getting is a very, very lingering bitterness from the hops. Um, again, the sweetness, not really coming through. That obviously would be from the malt. Body feels nice with this. Doesn't feel too heavy, doesn't feel too light. Um, this obviously not being a super fresh beer, I am curious of what it would be like on tap because I've not had this on tap. As it stands right now, I mean, this is this is a great beer. I've actually got another one of these in the fridge and I'm, I'm looking forward to drinking it. This, this is not a pound of flesh that I'm giving y'all to get through this review. I'm, I'm enjoying this beer. Yeah, it, it reminds me a bit of... Um, this might be to the chagrin of some of y'all. It reminds me a bit of... Sweetwater's 420 ale, but with a bit of a deeper hop flavor to it. Um, it's I know it's popular, at least in Georgia, to kind of rag on Sweetwater, um, you know, despite the the legacy they've carried. But 
that's what reminds me of. I have heard some people have said they've likened it to tasting similar to like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, and I can kind of get that from the pininess to it. But to me, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale has a much more prominent malt profile to it. Um, that could obviously be from the fact that it's bottle conditioned, kind of playing into that possibly. Um, I don't. I, to me, it tastes much more reminiscent of like a extra pale 420 um, in a good way. But I think this one. It, it's, it's got a few more pounds of muscle on it to me than a 420 does. Yeah, in terms of food pairing, I mean, you know, much as the can was kind of giving away the secret, this is this would be like a great cookout style beer. I could definitely see myself enjoying a couple of these with like grilled burgers, hot dogs. Um, even like grilled chicken. I'm definitely kind of getting a, a grill out feel from this. Um, maybe like a like a, a Nashville hot chicken sandwich, possibly. Like you, you've got some kind of that pine and a little bit of citrus to go with the heat. Oh, it's not too heavy. 5.5, it, it's not, it's kind of drifting out of that sessionable spectrum, I'd say, but you know, that, that comes, I think, down more to your own personal fortitude at that point. I mean, it's definitely not like, obviously, mathematically, like a 4.0 lager or something. You start getting past 5%, you start drifting out of that sessionable beer to me. But yeah, very, very tasty beer. Um, it's, you know, it's not the best pale ale I've ever had. It's not necessarily something, if I'm being honest, that I'm going to be purposely seeking out six packs of, but I go to Creature Comforts next time, I definitely would like to try this on tap. I definitely would recommend this to people. Um, if you like pale ales and you're around Georgia and want to give it a try, it's worth it. I mean, it, it's a very, very good, well-made beer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on this beer, y'all. Um, we're approaching summer, so you'll probably see this on the shelves. I think this is a year-round brew from them, so... Definitely sure to check the bottom of the can for the can on dates. I'm, I'm going to suspect we'll probably start seeing a lot more fresh offerings of this here soon in the coming weeks. And I'm I'm recording this around the beginning, mid of April. So, yeah, it's actually, I mean, last little thought, I guess. It's maintained the flavor well. Um, it actually tastes pretty similar that it did when it was still cold. So that's not a bad thing actually um carbonation held up pretty well too so but that's that's pretty much all i've got for you on that episode um have you all had this beer do you have any thoughts on creature comforts or the brewing scene in athens georgia i would love to hear from y'all if you want to leave a comment down below we can start having a discussion if you like the video leave me a thumbs up if you hate it leave me a thumbs down just give me some feedback and let me know what i can do to deliver you all better content in the future so until next time everybody be sure to keep your mind sharp your heart clear and your upper lip bitter we'll see you next time